Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I'm your host, Scott Reff. I'm going to be talking about a little bit of everything this week, and also it's going to uh, count for next week as well, because this is going to be a repeat for this week and next week, so I'll try to be as broad as possible in terms of events, things that are happening in Missoula, and just a lot of things overall. So we're going to kick things off with a little bit of uh, Missoula Current, which kind of has been bringing light to uh, a story that they were talking about in terms of secret seconds. So we're going to kick things off with that. So uh, thrift shops uh, are often cool. Many people like to go through them in some of the places for clothing and costume inspirations for Halloween and otherwise. Overall, the biggest issue are overnight dumping or donations. From the uh, report from Richard Forbes, um, a pea-stained mattress and unusable furniture, especially those who have been outside too long with potential uh, for bed bugs to grow. The story centers around Secret, Sen Secret Seconds, the uh, YWCA extension, where they help raise money for uh, uh, the YWCA programs and more to help uh, women of domestic violence and also provide shelter, who have mentioned uh, donations doubling during the pandemic and are uh, concerned about 75% of their donations are completely unusable. My advice, refuse any donations after hours instead of a person-to-person -person donations only. So much waste. Um, but I also have some clothing to get rid of too as well, just even thinking it from my own perspective because uh, another big change in Missoula is the large month golf course space uh, that may see uh, new housing or and commercial corridor. However, officials at Largemont want to make sure that the new location down, oh actually, um, just to reiterate, this is a, a proposal and this is something that they brought up to uh, the officials at Largemont and uh, they want to help encourage uh, being able to basically move Larchmont down the river. And if you see in this picture below, uh, you can see the proposed development alongside uh, the uh, a new neighborhood with a target of 2,000 new homes, a new medical offices and commercial opportunities, 800 single family homes, and a project which would also include 300 to 400 multifamily homes targeting less than 80% of their area uh, medium I me median income, as well as 450 senior living homes, which is also good because it's next to community hospital and they have a great uh, senior area as well. Uh, and so far, this is an idea, and those large amount officials don't want anything to do with this proposal. However, in enticing uh, the people t into moving the golf course closer to the Blackfoot River will also uh, provide community trails, um, boat ports, which all sound good on paper, but of course, chances are Missoula may have to look elsewhere to, el elsewhere to up their housing stock. And so, um, in other news, this is something that's kind of getting my goat. Uh, China healthcare workers have beaten and killed citizens' dogs. Uh, while in quarantine, health uh, care workers were in hazmat suits, entered uh, the home of Miss Fu, uh, who was getting tested for COVID. Uh, they proceeded to chase the dog and beat it to death off camera. The viral video, which I don't want to watch because it's it's uh, I'm pretty sensitive to that kind of stuff. Um, under immense pressure to take uh, to keep COVID-19 infections near zero, local health authorities have been taking extreme measures to prevent local transmission mission in northern city of Harbin, China. A woman reported that her three cats were killed in September while she was completed in quarantine, guarding anger online as well. Authorities in the cities of Chengdu and Wuxi, Wuxi have uh, similarly entered private homes while their owners are in quarantine and killed their cats. Another the dark chapter in the pandemic uh, saga, full story at npr.org. Along with that story, there's other things that are happening, uh, including a tennis pro that went missing in China, who's ranked number 14 in the world and number one in doubles. Uh, Peng Shui recently posted in Chinese social media that a top Chinese of uh, official sexually assaulted her in 2018, uh, soon after the post was deleted, and she wasn't seen again, only to have a letter sent out on behalf of her saying that she is okay and that post was wrong. She said that the former Vice uh, Chair Premier Zhang Galo Gaoli sorry, uh, forced her into sexual relations. Uh, Zhang, who was 75, served the post from 2013 to 2018, but then again, disappearing for weeks is not really okay, and the screenshot of the post have been circulating, and the Chinese government are most likely have to do a lot more than they have to give her one of those John Cena, Thailand is not a country type videos that she just puts out there in the video in, in the world. But that's most likely what's going to happen. Winter is coming, and we're uh, all 
We're all around the same time where a major spike in the U.S. cases of COVID-19. In November 2020, we saw one of the uh, largest spikes in cases just as the vaccine was rolling out. And we saw a decrease in February and numbers in the U.S. started to drop in October. Numbers are starting an uptrend upwards. Missoula has had their hardest time uh, leading into to the, the 2021 school year and masks were reintroduced here back at the library. And many other places were uh, heavily uh, moving forward and ask and heavily requesting people to wear masks and last week we saw montana at a 500 a week average for covid cases apart from a month ago where we shot more than double that cut that down to a a tenth of the state average and you get missoula which has been seeing a weekly averages peak around a hundreds uh for a seven day average and now has been seen just recently about 40s within the last seven days. And of course, uh, I've spoken with some parents that are Saturday drop-in saying most of them have gotten their kids vaccinated. They just kind of brought it up. And um, honestly, if you feel like your kids are ready to get vaccinated, you can always call them at 258-INFO, uh, otherwise known as 258-4636. For more sight into whether this is the right time, FDA just recently said that all adults are eligible for booster shots now and antiviral pill is going through the FDA CD CDC approval. And it's gonna be a kind of a game changer in terms of, um, Pre preventive care, preventive hospital care, and just for people who just want to get over-the-counter help rather than setting up an appointment to get a shot, and also pill for people who are anxious about getting shots just in general. My only advice is I think more people have to have a relationship with your doctor, have a good uh, rapport, and listen to them uh, more than just knowing their name. Um, rather than going to Dr. Google or crowdsourcing your medical advice. And so that's about that for uh, my news report and kind of going over there, just trying to keep it as broad as possible. But these are kind of like the hard items that are going to be hitting this week. Um, I also wanted to mention that uh, um, City Council uh, won't be meeting, uh, I believe, next week. And so they're going to be talking a little bit about this. And the biggest thing that they're going to be talking about is the recreational marijuana ordinance, which they hope to plan uh, to pass by the end of December. But they've been going back and forth to figure out exactly what their buffer zone is between the different areas in the city of Missoula. And one of the big things is that they're going to they've they uh, the staff have recommended uh, with the community development of the city of Missoula have recommended that a 500 foot buffer between businesses is good enough. Uh, the state uh, has their uh, state mandatory buffer that they set in place, which is a thousand feet between schools and places of worship. So that's the kind of things that are happening in the news. There's a lot of things like that. I'm going to dive a little bit deeper during my city council report, uh, talk a little, a little about uh, land use and planning and also uh, Black Friday and uh, Missoula's uh, co-opted, uh, I think, uh, by local Saturday. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that. But here is a interview that I did with the Montana Film Festival director, Carrie Reischer. And uh, she has uh, been doing this for many years now, and uh, this is uh, going to be interesting. So check out this interview. And then when I come back, um, actually, I don't have the interview. Hold on one sec. I just got to queue it up. Um, you just have to bear with me. Sorry about this. Uh, let's see here. Okay, here you go. Hi everybody, we're here with Carrie O'Shea. She is from the Roxy Theater and she's here to talk about the Montana Film Festival that's coming out this weekend from November 18th through the 21st. Yeah, so November 18th is Thursday right. and then it goes all the way through Sunday yep, evening. I, I saw on MissoulaEvents.net that uh, there are events happening many different films from all across Montana and also beyond Montana as well? Yeah, yeah. We started with Montana films and then we picked a couple other features and a couple of shorts that we just felt like rounded out the program and kind of hit the same tone, felt Montana-esque, but technically not Montana. Cool. How many films are, uh, are, are going to be presented there? We have nine feature films and 11 shorts. Nice. Yeah. Um, how many of them are locally here, made here in Missoula? Oh, you know, I'm not quite sure about Missoula, but I know there are like three or four that definitely involve crews right here in Missoula. And um, yeah. Nice. Are there any ones that stand out to you? Any of the films? Um, yeah, there's some exciting films. First, I just wanted to mention our shorts block, which is eight of those shorts. Um, is going to be free for everyone on Thursday. You do have to go to the Roxy Theater box office and reserve your ticket, but the whole screening is free and it's a really excellent offering of a bunch of shorts and Montana shorts. 
Um, and then The Power of the Dog by Jane Campion is something I'm really excited about. I've admired her work as a filmmaker for a really long time. So we were really thrilled to get that before it's being released on Netflix or in oh. any other theaters. Uh, please tell us a little bit more about this film. Yeah, um, it's kind of up, it's getting a lot of Oscar buzz. Benedict Cumberbatch yep. is um, one of the stars, as well as um, Jesse Plemons and oh, Kirsten right. Dunst. And it's like kind of a simmering, masculine, anger, Montana landscape, cool looking movie, I think. Um, another one that is really exciting is a film called We Burn Like This, which is made by Marshall Granger and Alana Waxman sort of used to live here and used to work at the Roxy and put together an awesome crew and shot uh, Alana's first debut feature. It's running like the festival circuit like crazy and they will be here to talk about the film that Saturday night. Oh wow. So there's a lot of definitely a lot of films happening. Um, what I noticed even in the last couple of years is that Montana had this new tax credit that encourages filmmakers to come to Montana and I've been seeing a lot of productions kind of moving to Montana and trying to basically kind of kickstart their own kind of film production studios here, not even in Missoula, but around the state of Montana as well. Yeah, I think, you know, there's two things I have to say about that. One is, um, I think this is the first year we're really seeing the product, the films coming out of that tax incentive. Um, Montana Story was totally made, is doing its U.S. premiere with us on Thursday night, and is was shot here because of that tax incentive. Um, another thing that I wanted to mention is that Allison Whitmer, the film commissioner of Montana, will also be here. And on Saturday, we have Saturday and Sunday is the film forum. So there are free filmmaking courses and panels mm -hmm. available to anyone who'd like to join us. And Allison will be there for the first two sessions on Saturday talking about film incentives, talking about tax credits, talking about how you can get involved in productions, safety on productions, and all kind of really important things, as well as a crew survey. So we're really hoping to expand the incentive. That sounds really fun. And um, where can people find more information? Where can they go? If you go to Montana Films, film, montanafilmfestival.org, everything should be there. For you. Cool. And you can see the whole list of films that are going to be playing at the Times and all the workshops. And uh, you have to sign up on the, for the workshops online as well at that website? You don't. The only workshop you have to sign up for is one where you learn special effects makeup and one where you actually get your hands on AC equipment. Um, the other ones are unlimited and you can just show up. You can also go to the Roxy box office or the Roxy website and buy your tickets there too. Awesome, well thank you. Yeah. So we're back here, we're kicking things off. Um, and just so you guys know, you can uh, f uh, find out more information um, from the uh, Montana Film Festival uh, by f from uh, November 19th to the uh, 20, uh, to the 20, uh, November 18th to the 21st. Sorry, I just got to get my bearings back. I uh, just had a little bit of a technical issue, but I'm back now. So kicking things off, let me see if I can fix everything back to normal. All right, so let's talk about some uh, movies that are coming on Hollywood and speaking of productions. Uh, try and bring life back to the next generation. Uh, Juno director and son of original Ghostbusters director Ivan Reitman's son, Jason Reitman, takes a swing at legacy Bill Murray that never really wanted to do, but did the only reason he did Ghostbusters is so he could do Razor's Edge, and we all remember Razor's Edge. Um, it's kind of funny uh, that the best uh, people for the role tend to be those who don't care about the project uh, because those who care too much about Ghostbusters. Um, but these Ghostbusters are children, uh, not women. And so welcome uh, to the Air Bud Buddies spinoff Ghostbusters movie. Up next, we have, oh, let me get that queued up. We got King Richard. It's a movie about the uh, Venus sisters, uh, Venus and Serena Williams sisters. Um, following the rise of the tennis superstars, uh, the Williams sisters, trainers first, father second. Uh, King Richards is a biopic following Will Smith uh, uh, as an overbearing father who wants the best for their kids regardless of their feelings. Uh, welcome to the uh, uh, depred uh, d disparity of wealth and how a lower class black family rises to the challenge while deciding what it means to be warriors on the tennis court and the rest of and the rest is kind of history. And plenty of the tropes, you know, you can't do the thing that you've never had the privilege of doing. And never forget where you came from. Oscar bait Will, uh, Oscar bait Will Smith movie. Anybody? Up next, we got uh, in the vein of yet another kid jumping 
on a poster comes a radio journalist embarking on a cross-country trip with his young nephew. That's basically the synopsis online. Um, let me just kind of guess this so far. I I'm, I'm believe that some kind of... Uh, the the nephew is stuck with his with uh, his uncle because of a personal tragedy and now has to learn uh, to be a strong parental presence in the child's formative years. Yeah, you, uh, you have a coming of age meets redemptive redemptive story and yet another Oscar bait film as we wait for the next Marvel movie. But lately, that doesn't seem that important anymore. All right, here is a speed round. We have a bunch of movies coming out and they're going to be rapid fire. Uh, bad luck banging or loony porn. Yes, it's an indie film. A woman deals with a very uh, real anxiety of getting her sex tape released on the internet. It sucks and revenge sex tapes are the worst kinds of people. Anyways, she is a teacher. Check. And has a wild past. Check. Up next, we have a Black Friday. Yet another reason to shop online and not do it until the stores run out of everything. Anyways, watch a zombie movie set inside a Walmart-type superstore with Bruce Campbell from Evil Dead and Army of Darkness or Burners or if you watch too much TV. Uh, then we have Zeros and Ones. Ethan Hawke tries to his hand at a D-list action stardom for money. A movie about a the Vatican has fallen and must fight the bad guys to save the world or whatever. Uh, the Feast, about someone getting a chance to have a very high-end type feast, which turns into a nightmare, per usual. Everything's fine, DJ Scratch, but not really. Um, then we got the, uh, yes, we have a kind of an Air Buddies, but this is kind of like, it's called Pups Alone. So imagine uh, Air Buddies, you know, or Air Dogs, or uh, alien, like, just, okay, these are a bunch of talking dogs, but they don't have the CGI on their mouth, too. I see their lips flap, so they just kind of do it mentally, kind of like uh, Milo and Otis. But hopefully without... <laughs> <laughs> the least amount of death. Look it up. All right, so those are your... Uh, so, and then last, uh, you folks want to watch a three-hour Chinese war film? That's that's the last film. So those are your uh, movies that are coming out this weekend as well. But I have a movie I kind of want to show you guys as well. It's called The Head from 1959. This is dubbing stuff. Oh, oh, hey. Hey there, Mr. Scientist. Well, I'm going to be there over in a bit. Um, I've got to take some time. I'm going to shotgun a pint of ice cream. That is just utterly disgusting. Hey, it's my cheat day. Don't you have a cheat day? Hello? hello. Dead body. Dead body. Dead body. Dead All right, <coughs> we got some questions. <coughs> Excuse me. Is this the dead body in question without a head? I suggest we ask the mortician to throw over the sheet. Or no, let's check this out. No, I will do it. Hmm. I wonder where the head is. This is very confusing. Cannot say for certain, sir. Well, if I was a betting man, I'd assume that it was taken. But what kind of ulterior motives would it be for? Maybe that guy used it for a Halloween costume of some sorts. I can think of a bunch of different scenarios, but I'd like to say it in private. Uh, say, you have to give me... Uh, Halloween. But Halloween is so far away. It's July, after all. But you know how much I hate to timestamp things. It's really stupid. It just makes people seasonal watchers. What's really weird is when Rudolph teamed up with Frosty and his family. It's like they're trying to extend Christmas for some reason. Huh, but don't get me started on Rudolph's Shiny New Year. I like that movie. If my calculations are correct, I have truly achieved head reincarnation. Hmm, but I'm kind of hungry. Oh! Oh! Yes. Yes, please speak. Please speak to me. Why did I say I was a universal donor? I was just getting a checkup. Yes, and as a scientist, it's very important for people to have good head health. Please tell me, what do you remember? Uh, I remember going to the grocery store. And then what happened? Tell me. Uh, uh, Come on. Uh, what? Uh, <sighs> What kind of sales did you see at the grocery store? Were avocados on sale? In this drought? I don't think so. Darn it! Avocados are just overrated. Don't buy them. Well, big avocado better watch their back. Anyways, moving on. We're going to kick things off with some city council. So we're going to talk a little bit more in depth about what's happening within, within the city, but we're going to kick things off with a proclamation. The part of this is to help boost, boost the local economy by, by local Saturday. So kick things off, we're going to have John Engen. Whereas small business 
<clears throat> pardon me, whereas small businesses form the backbone of our local economy, generating jobs and improving the quality of life for citizens. And whereas the city of Missoula, Montana supports the effort of local small businesses and recognizes the critical role they play in our community. And whereas Small Business Saturday is a nationwide campaign to cultivate business for small merchants on the Saturday after Thanksgiving. And whereas Small Business Saturday will simulate economic growth locally for small merchants by following in the tradition of Black Friday and Cyber Monday, two of the busiest shopping days of the year, I'm told. And whereas we encourage citizens to consider uh, shopping small merchants on Small Business Saturday as a way to boost the local economy and strengthen our small business community. Now, therefore, I, John Egan, Mayor of the City of Missoula and the State of Montana, do hereby proclaim November 27th, 2021 in Missoula as Small Business Saturday and encourage our residents to recognize and support small businesses within our community by shopping these establishments on the Saturday following Thanksgiving. All right, so that was Mayor John Ingen talking uh, so about that. Uh, up next, we actually had something that kind of popped out of uh, out of nowhere, and this is uh, kind of jumping back in, al uh, altering the city budget uh, during the fiscal year. They usually kind of do this kind of quarterly, and uh, if need be, to kind of balance the budget. The city receives grants and new money, otherwise identified expenditures or revenue that are not included in the regional budget. Uh, grants are always kind of like you never know if you're going to actually get the grants, and then you, you and then there's grants opportunities where you have to add matching funds for the grants. But anyways, this was actually very interesting because this was a uh, position for clean energy and moving towards 100% clean energy and uh, basically hiring a staff person whose job it is to uh, basically look into uh, new construction, new buildings and making sure that uh, they're energy efficient and also help moving towards that uh, zero emissions by 2050. And so uh, this is from uh, public comment, Mr. Uh, Corwald speaking first um, in terms of being in support of this position. I don't think that we have to discuss what climate change is or why it's essential to limit the burning of fossil fuels. We can all see what's happening to our world as a result of the last 250 years of fossil fuel burning. Last year, I watched trainloads of coal going through Makula with fear and anger and wondered what I could do to stop this irreparable and ongoing harm. The harm is ongoing not only in burning the fossil fuels, but in uh, extracting it from our land. I read recently that China alone, the People's Republic of China alone, burns 5.5 6 million tons of coal every week. They plan on increasing their coal-powered electrical capacity until 2030, and the rest of the uh, world burns a similar amount of coal every week. Okay, and so uh, there's another public comment. Also talks a little bit more in specific uh, support of this uh, position and how important it is. This is Bill, Bill Gear, retired uh, fish and wildlife biologist and current advocate for 350 Montana. Without the clean energy specialist hired as soon as practicable, the climate action goals are not likely to be met. And the coming climate catastrophe compels action, not just words and intent. And nothing in the clean electri electricity resolution calls for a casual or unfocused approach that can be simply picked up by your present staff who already have essential full time duties. The city of Missoula should hire the clean energy specialist to provide the intense focus that is called for and also must provide the budget policy and other essential support to ensure that the resolution succeeds for the benefit of all citizens. Within the oh, okay. Sorry about that. Okay. Sorry, because uh, there was a little gap and I thought he was going to say more. But Climate Summer Missoula has been uh, granted funds through the city for a couple of years now and has been advocating for clean energy. But this kind of action w will be up for uh, comment until next Monday for final consideration. I think this is a very interesting uh, kind of uh, expansion of the budget to kind of have an official position that goes towards clean energy. Not necessarily uh, in terms of what the public comments are saying, but in terms of just like basically uh, mitigating the amount of energy consumptions. Because one of the big things that are also happening in the city of Missoula as well is, you know, once we start doing all those cannabis dispensaries and grow operations in this uh, city of Missoula, the energy costs are going to be abysmal. Just like I talked about last week, they talked a lot about this and just how much money uh, is being put into just the energy. And they want to hopefully help mitigate this with their uh, uh, recreational marijuana um, ordinance that they put into place as well. Uh, Rezoning of Dearborn uh, 21 housing units and a building uh, the, with a projected height of 35 feet along with additional height for certain design standards. Uh, while the neighborhood has voiced support for the project, some remain concerned about the freedoms that will come with rezoning. 
particularly around height. And this is also close to uh, Winco Foods, like kind of like halfway between Winco Foods and the train tracks, a little bit closer to the train tracks. But, you know, there's, a, already, there's already a couple commercial buildings that are already kind of tall in that area. So uh, Kaylin McCafferty talks a little bit more about this, uh, given the presentation. Within the pink and orange area, which identifies the land use designation of community mixed use, this designation supports high intensity commercial uses that serve community needs such as retail, financial institutions, professional and personal services offices, um, and high density residential. Um, this is mainly because it's uh, close to the mall and integrated with main transportation corridors, including public transit and active transportation systems. Yeah, and there's just definitely a lot going on here as well. If you look at this, like you up here, you have uh, closer to Reserve Street, and as you go down closer to here, this is the uh, the train tracks, the the trail, as you saw, see right here clearly. And it's just a, a there's just a lot of uh, thing happening there. And the owners, it's a privately owned uh, area as well, and they want to move forward with uh, being able to uh, continue uh, like to build and more have those unit complex. They don't actually have an official design, and so during the presentation they give examples of what they might do but so far they just kind of want to create a higher density kind of unit housing uh in that particular area and they just want to rezone it there and uh, since it's so close to a lot of already businesses anyways they just figure that uh, with by rezoning they're able to increase their uh, housing stock as well um let's see Let's get back to that uh, recreation marijuana ordinance. Uh, while others are grandfathered in, uh, Missoula plans to create a buffer between dispensaries, the new ones that are coming in. And so far, they came up with various buffers ranging from 500 to 1,000 feet between dispensaries, energy caps, uh, because cannabis indoor grow operations, like I said before, take a lot of energy. The total cost, energy cost for indoor grow operations varies between 20 to 50% of total operating costs and use 10 times as much energy per square foot as a typical office building in the Southwest. So grow operations will be uh, contributing against net zero in the city of Missoula. They also have this slated for the land use and planning committee that I, I I kind of briefly went over, but for the most part, I'm going to just tell you here first and foremost is that they just repeat a lot of the same stuff they did in this in these uh, next couple quotes that I have for you guys. But if you course, if you want to know about the law and the history, dive in, watch the land use and planning, watch the city council meetings. But so far, they really want to get this uh, um, going and want to look to get approval by the 29th of November. So Spencer Stark for Permanente for the city of Missoula um, kind of has a map and kind of shows you exactly kind of like the areas and zones and hopefully uh, gives a, a little clearer explanation, but I'll try to talk a little bit more about it after he's done. This app map uh, illustrates the areas where dispensaries would be would be permitted within the city of Missoula. Um, the areas in blue, pink, red, and light pink are all areas that uh, would permit cannabis dispensaries. And of course, as you can see here, you know, just a little bit closer map, a lot of mixed use diversity just around the city of Missoula, just uh, and uh, parts of the area around and it. Must oh, sorry about that. And, you know, it's 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 just a move forward. And then, of course, the next quote, quote you're going to see is tra uh, Cassie Trippard. And she talks a little bit uh, more from the business sides and just in terms of the basic concerns people have. And most restrictive at a thousand feet, uh, we would have many more legal non-conforming businesses downtown. For reference, if we were starting with a blank slate, then this buffer would really only allow about one or two dispensaries in the central business district, depending on how they would be theoretically placed. Staff believe that a thousand foot buffer is overly restrictive considering no other use such as bars, regular retail stores or restaurants have a buffer requirement. And the 500 foot buffer gets to the goal of preventing oversaturation and preserving a diverse mix of uses. Um, and because it meets that goal, staff don't see a need to go overboard with this requirement. Okay, so uh, part uh, part of that, let's see. Um, going, going, kind of, kind of going back to uh, what they're talking about. Um, like a lot of times, that like as a new regulated drug for people to uh, take recreation recreationally. Um, for the most part, these aren't the kind of places people are going to be able to go frequently to actually go there, test the stuff, and just you know, like it's not like a bar. The whole idea is that you take it, then you take it home, and then you can do whatever you need to do at your house. But at the same time, there's going to be a lot of regulations in terms of like what is like even the Montana state law. It's kind of like, you know, when you're smoking outside and people can smell you that you're smoking, that's that's the 
the equivalent of having an open container. And so you won't get as severe as a punishment as you would have done before the uh, thing. But at the same time, there's a lot of scrutiny when it comes to a lot of the laws. If you look up the law, I believe it's 701 for the state law of Montana to uh, learn more about this as well. But both medical and recreational will fall under the same ordinance. So both apply here. This, it has, it, this is for dispensaries, not for the ones that are just for medical, but also for recreational moving forward. They want to create any new businesses coming in here. So for, so far, a lot of the businesses that are here, and there, there's quite a few, especially downtown. There's going to be over 60 dispensaries uh, in Missoula that are going to be kind of really popping off starting in January 2022. So they're just trying to figure out, it's like, okay, we want to make sure that there's not a shop every block. So th this is some of the things they're trying to do to help mitigate it, but also not discourage competition amongst businesses as well. And so far, the buffer is not to discourage businesses, but to control the rapid growth I of this new business, but also not discouraging capitalistic competition. Legal nonconforming would be the grandfathered of businesses. So the whole uh, idea is that this law was made after the businesses already existed. So legal nonconforming is what these businesses that currently exist fall under. Uh, so let's see. So far, uh, this is uh, something they hope to get implemented by January, but I've uh, stated that they are trying to reach out to businesses to exp uh, and expect the ordinance to go into effect of February 2022. And so far, this meeting is ongoing, and the timeline extends to the end of November, where many of them will have the final consideration for the vote. All right, so in terms of final consideration, the United Way of Missoula was granted $26,250 for the centralized housing solution. This is to help over 70 people in the city of Missoula help pay the rent, and also people who are struggling with that as well. There's a lot of organizations. The uh, Montana uh, government, Montana.gov is a great way for people who are worried about uh, their uh, renters paying the rent and renters paying the rent. So it's not just about the renters, but if the landlords are concerned that their renters not paying the rent, they can look into this kind of stuff as well. But the key thing is communication, and it's always good to have that kind of communication with the landlords. Um, although it does get a little more difficult as soon as you get more corporatized uh, land owners as well so uh, like a property management group so anyways uh that's kind of like this or that uh but this lot uh, of course you know th this is also they're going to do final consideration of the wyoming street and they talked about the you know the plans for businesses mixed use and high density this is near silver park wyoming street we talked about this many times i don't want to talk about any more and this is going to be the last time i talk about it because they approved the rezoning for these businesses to uh kind of uh, appear in these particular areas. So moving on, let's talk about admin finance. Uh, Relationship vi uh, Violent Services of Missoula is being funded with uh, $184,165. Relationship Violent Services, Division of Par Department of Grants and Community Programs. It works to eliminate relationship violence and sexual violence through individual uh, victim advocacy, system, uh, system advocacy programs development, Community partnerships and public education through CVA, Crime Victim Advocates. You can call them at 406-258-3830 for uh, help if you have uh, uh, dealt with uh, uh, domestic violence or know somebody who has d dealt with domestic violence and you're looking for help. Uh, land use and planning on recreational marijuana ordinance. Some more about that on the next edition, but I'm not going to talk too much about this because I'm going to be talking about the West Broadway Master Plan because this is a big area. So... Basically, just as the pandemic was starting, uh, the city of Missoula bought a controversial uh, plot of land, the Sleepy Inn Motel, for a million dollars. And so this whole area also uh, encompasses um, not only the Sleepy Inn Motel, but also encompasses the um, Missoula Water Company. Uh, they, uh, and uh, so part of this is that they want to create uh, a new kind of uh, area, shopping district, a plaza um, in a way, but so far they have many different ideas they want to put into this, but they want to in, uh, implement housing, businesses, and just kind of like a new kind of uh, area they want to uh, update and change as well. Uh, Rob Pakowski with uh, Dover Coal and Partners, they're uh, an organization with town development as well and a uh, private uh, company. So uh, here is uh, what they're talking about, This what this area uh, could be. And so here is this. So the plan has five big ideas. <clears throat> and these uh, form the, the overall framework for the plan and as specific details change, these five big ideas should still um, hold true and be used to guide any changes that may happen in details as things are implemented. The first is build the next great Missoula Neighborhood Center. Second big idea is to be a good neighbor and respect local businesses currently on site. The third is to connect to the river and complete the path system. The fourth is to help solve housing affordability 
and commercial space affordability issues. And the fifth is to create a unique entry experience to urban Missoula. Oh, okay. So the biggest thing that the, uh, the proposal is, is uh, the city owns a good chunk of the land around it, which includes uh, Mountain Water, or Missoula Water Company, and also uh, uh, the Sleepy Inn Motel. And the big five ideas were kind of implemented by the outreach that they have done for the uh, West Side, West Broadway neighborhood as well. Trying to talk about investing in this area for Parks and Trails. Uh, they all, the city also looked to uh, make this uh, area, they tried to look for getting some grants and stuff like that. So they're trying to figure out a oh, best way to uh, reflect the, uh, the needs of the community moving forward. Of course, my favorite part of their big five ideas in the area is the roundabout proposal located at the stoplight uh, that branches from Broadway, Tool Avenue, and California Street. It's a, it's a very interesting kind of road. And, you know, any, any intersection that doesn't actually have a, you know, four, a four-way intersection, you know, Honestly, it's like malfunction junctions and all that stuff. It's really hard to kind of mitigate traffic. And it, there's been so many times where the flow just kind of feels off most of the time. So anyways, my favorite part of the idea was that. And also it would also be a cal uh, traffic calming area because there's so many times where I'm just driving down Broadway going the speed limit, mind you, and people right in my ass. Um, sorry about the language, but I'm, I'm miffed about that. But it, Rob talks about the roundabout on the malfunction junction. And so this is what he has to say. Providing a safe crossing at Burn Street, which would connect down to the Long Green. This could include um, some sort of signal, like a hawk signal to allow for safer access, um, as well as a roundabout at North California Street, Tool, and West Broadway Street. Initially, uh, the plan wasn't really looking at West Broadway Street because of it lies outside the, the control of the city. Uh, but essentially, every meeting we had, uh, valid concerns we heard were uh, the difficulty of crossing from the North Side, West Side neighborhoods down to the river and getting across West Broadway Street. And so um, we, we took a look at it, providing this, this guidance, um, working closely with um, city staff. Oh, okay. So I, I, I did want to go back just a little bit more. Um, yeah, so th this is, was the proposed roundabout right here. You got Tool Avenue, you got uh, Broadway Street, you got California, you got all these roads right here. And just trying to figure out a, a, the best uh, way to uh, create a, a smooth uh, pathway for folks just going in and out of this area as well. Because Honestly, like I've been living in Missoula a long time. I always take that route to get to work all the time. I mean, the light is always uh, more beneficial for people going on Broadway, down to Broadway, and turning off of Tool Avenue. And then, um, yeah, I mean, just people on California Street. There's not too many people around that area, but if they're going to be uh, um, ingesting more and more businesses and that kind of stuff, I mean, just getting access to any of those places, even like at the Sleepy End, just like being able to actually get there is, you know, it's a pain. There, there's a lot of issues in that particular area that hopefully this will help mitigate. And the city owns a good portion of these properties uh, based on the, uh, like I said before, Sleepy and Motel and also the Missoula Water Company. And of course, zoning would allow for up to 10 story buildings, but the plans for Dover and Coal Partners will take quality control to create a flow that better meets the West Broadway neighborhood ideals. The uh, city has properties on the Sleepy Inn. Of course, the last hour of the L land use and planning was the recreational marijuana ordinance, which I already covered in length and uh, I've been talking about for the last couple weeks. It's a big thing that's happened in the city of Missoula, but for the most part, the state regulation kind of covers a lot of things, but they just wanted to make sure that uh, with Missoula being Missoula, they wanted to make sure that uh, they wanted to help mitigate the amount of dispensaries popping up pretty much everywhere in the city of Missoula. And you'll start seeing them. It's going to be kind of crazy starting uh, January. But anyways, for more information, you can go into the city of Missoula's website, ci.missoula.mt.us. It is a wonderful source for everything the city of Missoula has to offer in, turn, in terms of permitting and just updated things. You go to ci.missoula.mt.us. Click on to where it says meetings right here. Boom, you click on it. I prefer the uh, calendar view. You can choose a list view, but it usually kind of goes in from... Um, as they post it online about upcoming meetings and more. So this kind of gives you uh, dates and times in which uh, these meetings uh, take place. And by clicking on any of those links that you see here, let me just zoom in a little bit more. Y any of these links that you see here, uh, you basically be able to pop in. Uh, it'll open the one of these links right here. I, I suggest you go to uh, Agenda HTML because it brings you to a website, HTML website. And then it brings you to a video in the corner. You can see the video and you can click on any of these hyperlinks down below and it brings you, boom, 
right to the timestamp where the meeting occurs, which right here it says 950, where they're talking about a bid word for Prospect Construction Incorporated for the Cooper Street Alley Water Main Replacement. Oh, that sounds great. Uh, <laughs> all right, so that's about... <laughs> All right. All right. Anyways, um, so uh, up next, we're going to talk about some craft fair stuff. So I'm not going to talk uh, too much about uh, some events as well because I didn't want to really time snap my episode because we'll be seeing this next uh, week as well. So without further ado, here is an art clip being featured at the Missouri Museum, Neil Ambrose Smith. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back. Um, I have another video I'm going to show you guys later in the show. Can I like wrap things up? This is going to be featured on our MCAT channel, and also it's kind of it's kind of a b big historic event. It's the uh, solar array that they put on the detention center. I'm going to show that video in a bit, but before I do that, I'm going to talk a little bit more about the Missoula Valley winter market. Hey, you know the farmers market's over. The Concourse near next to Seals in the 2020 Southgate Mall partnered with the long-running Missoula Valley winter market. Uh, relocating to a growing farmer's market to the new uh, recreational shopping center. This year's market is in back of the Southgate Mall, but in a new location, uh, the concourse event space next to Shields. You know, they have all uh, a, a great space right there. It's a, kind of a, a new entryway that they put into place uh, at the mall, so you guys can check that out. Uh, and it goes Saturdays from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m., and it's going to go well into April. So all the winter months, you guys can check that out. The, it's a great way to uh, get, you know, just have a touch with the farmer's market, and also they're doing a lot of arts and crafts and stuff like that because there's not really not much you can really grow or anything like that. They might have some surplus of some of their stuff that they've had over the summer, but for the most part, this is kind of like uh, baked goods, uh, other things like that if you guys get a chance to check it out. And if you can't go for Saturdays, they also have a Wednesday night from uh, 4.30 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. You can go to Destiny destinationmissoula.org for more events about this and more. Um, yeah, I mean, this is, uh, I mean, this is a, a, a fun event, a great way for people to still get their uh, farmer's market cravings going on there as well. It's every Saturday as well. But speaking of, you know, just arts and crafts and more and stuff like that, if you have any interest in doing that, m every Saturday, Missoula Art Museum has an uh, open art studio for teenagers. They have a limit to about 12. They're always looking for people, looking for teenagers, for, uh, and this goes from about 12 to 3 p.m. Um, MCAT also has our own kind of kid drop-in for teens and kids alike for people who want to make stop animation, Legos, that kind of stuff. We have some Play-Doh, uh, and you can bring some of your own stuff as well, and we do that from 1 to 3 every single Saturday here at the MCAT library space as well, and it is free. So it's like whoever wants to jump in, just join us, that kind of thing. It, we want to create a creative environment for kids alike, just like the Missouri Museum. All right, so uh, let's talk about some crafts fair. Some craft fairs are happening um, on November 27th. Uh, Sentinel has their craft fair from uh, 9 to about 3 p.m. They usually do it in their uh, uh, gymnasium, so you guys can check that out as well. Uh, December 11th, the Big Sky uh, High School 
holiday craft fair. This is another Saturday from 9 to uh, 3 p.m. You'll hear all about it, but I'm just giving you kind of like the ground floor on just a lot of these craft fair and what as well. And I believe that there is another uh, craft fair happening at the U uh, at the UC Center on Saturday tomorrow, so you might want to check that out as well. Um, December 12th, which is Sunday from 11 a.m. to 6 p.m., the University of Montana Adams Center is the Holiday Maid Fair. So at the University of Montana Adams Center, uh, big, huge event, a lot of things happening. Maid Fair is like the event to go to. Every year I've gone to, it gets bigger and better every year. Uh, this is, uh, it's good, and I believe this is not going to be, uh, this won't be any less, and this is going to happen on December 12th. And then, of course, Lolo Montana is also doing a PTSA craft show and this is going to be from 9 a.m. at the Lolo School District from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. on December the 4th. Uh, then you got November, November, uh, November 27th which is the Nine Mile uh, Holiday Craft Fair in Nine Mile. Um, so you can check that out in Husson, Montana. Uh, Little Red Truck European vac Christmas Vacation Vintage Market, Missoula County Fairgrounds. They have this market every year. Um, and th this is where they used to have the winter market. Um, and so this is a great place for people for the Little Red Truck European Christmas Vintage Market on December 3rd, Saturday. Um, and actually, it's Friday and Saturday. Uh, and this is going to be happening uh, nine to four roughly uh frenchtown pta craft fair is happening december 4th from 9 a.m to 5 p.m a lot of craft fair a lot of things happening but also on the 21st which i believe is a sunday uh from 12 to 6 p.m they're doing a craft fair for f uh, 2021 friends and family holiday show at the zootown arts community center so a lot of craft fair happening this weekend as well and i do have some time to show you guys another video and this is from uh, let's see this is from the solar array project that they put up on the roof of the detention center. So without further ado, I'm going to show you guys uh, this clip. And then, wait, hold on, let me just cue it up. So I just want to give it a, a little introduction as that the uh, Missoula County Commissioners, uh, TJ McDermott, uh, the sheriff for Missoula County, all showed up to talk about the solar array that was put onto the roof of the Missoula County Detention Center to help mitigate the costs. And they talk a little bit more about this, but it is a really cool uh, thing that they're doing to help mitigate the energy efficiency of the, um, uh, the, the detention center, which uses a lot of energy. So Without further ado, here's the video, and um, and for Waco, Missoula, I'm Scott Ramp. Have a good weekend, guys, and uh, happy Thanksgiving. <laughs> well, this is a perfect day to talk about solar energy. Uh, my name is Josh Sladek. I'm one of our three county commissioners, and I'm here at our county detention center to talk a bit about solar energy. A person may think, why are we talking about solar energy at the detention center? And that's because on top of this roof is the biggest rooftop solar array in the state. Yes. The Woo. biggest yes. rooftop solar array in the state. And it's important to note that this biggest solar array rooftop in the state was done without a complementarily large outlay of taxpayer money. So a person could wonder, how could that possibly be? Well, this isn't just the biggest solar array. It's the first one done with a very unique and special sort of financing where local government pro partnered with the private sector and took advantage of some tax credits. And that's how we could save taxpayer money and make a real dent in energy production. This project could only happen because a whole bunch of people showed a lot of vision and creativity and willingness to solve problems. And I'm just gonna, I gotta, I gotta look at these notes to make sure when I thank them, I don't skip anybody. So I wanna thank uh, Serac and Onsite Energy really, for their vision and diligence and patience through this whole process. Deputy County Attorney Brian West and CFO Andrew Chorney for all their hard work. Sheriff McDermott and Rich and Commander Kowalski <laughs> and Jeremiah, all the staff here. This goes far beyond what's in any of their job descriptions, but it means they were really looking out for the interests of Missoula County. And to our two Jasons, Emery and Hauser, so competent, we are so fortunate to have these two Jasons. This project could have died many times because the obstacles were too high, and these guys only thought about how to get past them. They never gave up. Especially to Diana Minetta, who shepherded this thing from its first first conversation about it right through, the, right through its end. Somebody had to keep the whole thing going and Diana made that happen. 
So I want to make sure we thank all these people. We're going to give these guys a, a chance to speak as well. My last little bit. This is all about energy. Well, there was another energy force here that needs to be mentioned and called out, and that's called inertia. Local government's often held back by this. This is a 10-ton weight around our necks that keeps us doing exactly as we've done before, only because we did it that way. We were able to shed that and do things in a different way. We can actually do big things. We can change how we do business, but only with some vision and some commitment, and most of all, a whole lot of cooperation. And that's what we saw here today. So with that, I'm gonna hand this off to people who, can, who are smarter than me and can answer some more technical questions. But first, uh, my friend, Sheriff McDermott. Sure. Thank you, Josh. Yes. Welcome, uh, good afternoon, and just wanna thank everyone for being here. It's truly an exciting day for the Sheriff's Office and for Missoula County. In 2019, Missoula County established a goal of carbon neutrality in county government operations by 2035 with an immediate goal of reducing gas emissions by 30% below 2016 levels by 2025. And what started out years ago as a few of us on the rooftop realizing how much sunlight is up there, how bright it is, especially if you forget your sunglasses, uh, we saw the potential of the space, and today it's a very large array of solar panels, uh, a project that we can be proud of, uh, one of the biggest projects in the state that's gonna help offset the cost of energy being consumed by the jail for years to come and save taxpayers money. So I'm, I'm proud of this project, and this project happened because we have a good team at Missoula County, and with the help of many citizens. And uh, I wanna point out, Commissioner Slotnick, uh, one of our citizens, Jim Parker, in the back, he, he was up on the roof from day one, and others from his group and Diana that, that brought this idea together, and it was a tough idea. It, there were struggles, there were hurdles, and, and it took a long time. We've been talking about this for so long, but where the rubber meets the road, these folks here made it happen, and I'm proud of it, and I'm proud to be a part of the team. So, thank you. Um, hi, I'm here to represent Sarok. Um, and we invested in this rooftop solar because we believe in, in renewable energy. Um, we moved to Missoula County about 30 years ago when we saw forest fires about uh, maybe once every five or 10 years, smoke in the valley and stuff like that. Now we're seeing it, at least from uh, my perspective, at least four, four times a year, I mean, four times every five years. So we're just having to deal with the changes the climate changes we're seeing and I, I really feel that Susan and I really feel the best way we can do deal with those climate changes is, is try and support renewables and sustainable energy development um, indeed it was great working with the county um, you know Diana Mineta and I have been talking about this uh, probably for four years um, COVID slowed us down a bit, but uh, we finally got it done. And, and certainly on-site energy, Orion Thornton, without his design and without his implementation of the design, uh, putting it on the roof, we, we wouldn't have anything right now. Um, but we're very glad to help the county out. We're very glad to uh, keep some good, sustainable, renewable energy flowing into this building here. And uh, we hope to work in the future with the city, uh, the university, and maybe even the county again. So a special thanks to the county commissioners. They're the one that got us on this track to renewable energy. Uh, congratulations to them. Thank you for doing it. And uh, thank you all for being here. So first I heard of this was from my friend Dave Stromer a long time ago who said, We've been talking about getting solar on the jail, and we, we, we've been getting after that. It just it, it, Things just hadn't aligned right. Uh, we brought in Diana. Diana talked about this type of financing, which had not yet been tried before. Heard about Roy and Sarah, so we reached out to Roy. That led to on-site, back to the sheriff, our two Jasons, and it just kept going round and round, and eventually we were able to get hold of it. So the project is owned by Sarok Energy, third party investors, so there's no upfront cost to the county. Um, the county will 
um, pay Ceroc Energy for the power that it produces um, for the first five years, and then the plan is for the county to purchase the system at a depreciated rate after that time, at which point um, the energy would just go toward reducing the county's utility bills. And I know that there was uh, something about a 25-year warranty. I mean, obviously that's you know, a couple decades in the future, but would there be the potential to you know replace this you know after after that? Um, in terms of the 25 year and the lifetime of the panels, Oran, do you want to answer that question? What, if they're likely to last longer than 25 years? Uh, yes, the kind of standard warranty for like the panels themselves is 25 years, which is in line with the lifespan, expected lifespan of the roof itself, because there's a new roof that was installed last summer. And so what's really going to come to fruition is that the roof's going to need to be replaced probably at that 25 year mark, and then there'll be a decision by the county to either take the solar array off and reinstall it, or maybe invest in newer technology at that time. Um, so overall, we're expecting the solar array to produce about 20% of the electricity that's used at the detention facility. Um, and looking over the 25-year 20, warranty period, we've calculated um, estimated savings of almost $400,000 to the county based on reduced utility bills. All right, and I can add, as far as county buildings go, this building consumes the most energy. And our yearly energy bill is, you know, close to three hundred thousand dollars a year. So this project is is going to pay huge dividends for for taxpayers and our community and for the environment.